So hi, thanks for coming. Um, I provided for the recording, so uh, it turned out your ears if it's a problem. But um, skip working for you is lessons from the Drupal ladder, and I'm Fury. Um, Fury on Twitter. I'm also a Code for America fellow. Um, applications are open for the next three weeks. So if you are someone who paid to work on open source projects that will solve these problems, please come talk to me afterward. Um, but I'm here because I started these things called Drupal Ladder Meetups in New York. To be clear, I did not start the Drupal Ladder Meetups in general. I started them in New York City. But this is not, oops, this is not a Drupal talk. Um, so don't panic. If you're not interested in Drupal or if you don't know anything about Drupal, it's really okay. Um, what this is about is using the Drupal Ladder, which I'll explain, as a case study about how structured systems for step-by-step -step skill building and engagement, so catchy, can, especially when coupled with a community element, help your project. So this approach, I'm arguing, can be a secret weapon for both getting more people involved in your project and also um, for increasing the diversity of the group of people who are doing it and getting credit for higher status talk tasks. Um, I'm going to ask you to bear with me if that sounds like horrifically selfish or something, but I think I'm assuming that people might be interested in a combination of the health of your projects, the health of the open source community in general, and social justice, and in my mind, like, uh, <laughs> the status of people who have been historically underrepresented um, is part of that. If this is too long for you to listen, here's my main point. Um, if you want to listen, is offering a structured approach for step-by-step -step skill building to combat imposter syndrome and build community, thereby increasing the number and diversity of your project's contributors. So, for Drupal, the problem has been, with great popularity comes great responsibility. Drupal is the second most popular content management system in the world right now, after WordPress. Uh, <laughs> 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 It runs whitehouse.gov, major media sites like The Economist and The Weather Channel, and nonprofit sites all the way from small community organizations up to the Red Cross and Amnesty International. But as the number of Drupal sites and users has exploded, the pool of core contributors, people working on what you get if you go to drupal.org and just download it, has not kept pace um, historically. And in 2011, there started to be a lot of public conversations about burnout and burnout prevention. Um, enter the Drupal ladder as one of an element inspired by those conversations. It was initially known as the Boston Initiative. It's because Brian Hirsch, who's now at the White House, led its development at the Boston Drupal Meetup. Thanks, Brian. Um, but, um, oh, goodness. And, um, <laughs> uh, ah, pardon, slide navigation issue. Um, there we go. This is the initial proposal. Oh, no, it's not. This is me having opened the initial proposal on a separate tab. All these for the confusion. Let's try it again. Oh dear. No, All right. The initial proposal. Pardon. Um, ooh, <laughs> as posted to Bruce.Drupal.org, which is a piece of community infrastructure. Um, as you can see, uh, he laid out based on conversation at DrupalCon London, a few key components. One is a list of all of the ways that people contribute to Drupal Core. Another is organizing that list into steps. Um, I'm going to have these slides up online afterwards, so if people want to click on the images, they'll be linked to the original thing, so you can see that. Um, figure that it's probably easier than putting the URLs on everything, because they're not very user friendly. Um, so, uh, taking a step back, a list of all the ways to people contribute. That includes things like rewriting issues so that they're clearer, so they're closer to being workable, which is not always something people think of, but it saves an enormous amount of time all around and increases, the, improves the signal to noise ratio for people who are like uh, otherwise able to be doing tasks that might more commonly be thought of as like working on board. Um, organizing that list into steps, the first few steps following the latter metaphor are easy for anyone, minimal knowledge of Drupal required, setting aside our ableist metaphors for the moment. Um, as you climb higher up the ladder, taking any consecutive step up the ladder is within reach as long as you've taken the first step. So it might require a little more doing, but you're like, well, I'm doing it. A write-up of clear instructions for each step that makes it easy to get up and running in 15 to 30 minutes so people can make a meaningful contribution in an hour or two. Um, and that is because there's also an element of explicit engagement of existing community infrastructure, which is my wonky way of referencing the Drupal user groups. So there are already people meeting up regularly. Part of the idea was what if we can harness some of that energy and give people an opportunity to be working, um, working both to improve their skill sets and get 
the kinds of experience that they want, and also to be closing out issues in the world itself. Plus, this is not explicitly referenced there, but um, in the in the initial proposal, but um, supporting communication tools, community infrastructure for this effort, like DrupalModern.org, and contact people for people interested in getting involved, and explicit invitations for Drupal user group leaders to implement this. So here is um, the Drupal Core Ladder on DrupalModern.org. Yes, that's on the website. As you can see, there are a couple other ladders, which I'm not going to um, show you in this talk, but this is the main, the main thing is basically how we go from uh, I have some experience with Drupal site building to up this ladder, so it's you know reverse, reverse order here, um, all the way up to um, reviewing and revising patches that are going into form. Um, this is an example of one of those steps. So this is the get started in the issue queue step. Again, I won't take you through the whole thing, but you can just see from looking at it, it's got a description. It's got resources, it has what you need to know so far with really good cross-linking to the other steps and other pieces. So the idea is really like giving as much support as possible to someone to go from like, this is a thing I might be a little intimidated about or it just is new to me, you know? Someone might have plenty of experience in other open source communities, um, but they might not know about this particular thing. So just giving them as many, like, anticipating where the problems might arise and give as much as possible. Um, so to recap, um, Drupal Ladder is a series of how-tos that people can use by themselves if they want to or if they're not connected to the existing community infrastructure, so you don't have to be part of that to be able to get started. But from the start, the idea was to leverage existing community groups to both get work done on the Drupal project and to build capacity in the community. Which brings us to New York, or so I started New York. Um, I've been out of town a lot, touring with the band I was in at the time, and I knew we were going to be back for more of the year than we usually work. Um, I've been in the Drupal community for about seven years at that point, and I wanted to give back to Drupal and to the local community that had been so important to me. And I also finally wanted to start contributing to Core. Um, Drupal Ladder specific steps that groups had started in other cities, but there wasn't one yet in New York. So I first reached out to the designated Drupal Ladder contact person to DrupalLadder.org and to the people who were running New York's Drupal Meetup group, and they told me, go for it, run with it. So I arranged the space through New York Drupal Meetup um, contacts, posted the event to groups at Drupal.org, and pitched the ladder at the first New York Drupal Meetup of the year. So basically, this is environmental scan, see what's already being done. Organize the thing, just start somewhere, don't worry about making it the best possible thing, and recruit, recruit, recruit. Um, as mentioned, I pitched it at the first New York Drupal Meetup of the year. I definitely blatantly capitalized on people's New Year's resolutions. <laughs> you know, go around at the meetup, and people, a lot of people said, like, this is the year I'm going to finally learn about Drupal 8 because it's coming around the bend, or like, this is the year I'm going to do something for the community. And I stood up at the end of it and was like, hey, if you'd like to do something for the community in Drupal 8 and learn more about it, <laughs> we've got this great opportunity already scheduled and up on groups.drupal.org, and why you can sign up right now. So set up the infrastructure, do the thing. Um, outreach is crucial. As many of us know, if you build it, it will come as a flawed design pattern. So I used some of the following tactics, but I have tips to community organizing. One-on-one -on -one outreach um, to get around the bystander effect, which is like someone else and the imposter syndrome, uh, but don't be creepy, respect people's consent. Um, I use people's contact forms on Drupal.org, uh, direct messages on Twitter, one-on-one -on -one emails. Basically try to make real clear like, I think you would be a great person to have as part of this. Are you interested? What what would be interesting to you? You know, um, promoted through existing channels. In the case of Drupal, this was there's a meetup group in New York. Um, Drupal NYC has a Twitter account. Um, so you're trying to integrate it to what already exists, so that people who are tapping into those channels are you know hearing about it. Um, we didn't start a separate group on groups.drupal.org. So every time I posted a new meetup event. I would post it as a comment on the last one. I would also post a comment, excuse me, on the last one to make sure that people who had either gone or been interested would hear about the next one. Um, so make sure you're just thinking about where people might potentially be dropping out or, or using being really and reaching out to them. Um, some tips for for doing, you know, just the specifics of that. Um, this is largely with like hat tips too, anti-oppression trainings, effective volunteer management, community organizing. Um, assume the person reading is new, be welcoming, and avoid jargon, um, no matter how many events you've had, especially if you've had more events. In fact, if it's something like a step-by-step -step thing, um, I try to be really clear, like, uh, you know, maybe don't emphasize that they've been going on for a bit, make it clear that anyone 
who, in this case, has Drupal site building experience and a laptop, is welcome to join. And if you don't have a laptop, you can contact me and I'll see if I can get you in for the thing. You know? But um, try to uh, anticipate and address the concern of like, well, I haven't been coming to the meetups or I missed them for a couple months or whatever it might be. Also avoid jargon, especially with all due respect, if you're an episode called something like a Drupal ladder, which is not inherently a phrase that conveys a lot of meaning to people. Um, when people say they can't make it, respond. Um, when people ask questions, respond. Be responsive. Um, and be the nicest guy in the room, even if that room is the internet. It's a big room. <laughs> and uh, do your best to make it a positive experience for everyone. Um, that really does pop back in there. But um, you know, you want people to stay in the community. Like it's it's not enough to just make a thing and invite other people. Um, you really have to, if you if you are taking lead on something like this, involve as many people as you can and diverse perspectives and um, demonstrate that you're like accountable and adapting and you know that it's you know, a real community project. Some challenges uh, that I noticed over the course of the year. Trauma around school or structured learning. Many people have it. <laughs> um, and people have trauma around learning environments. People have to learn how to learn. Not everybody feels equally safe experimenting or not immediately knowing something. And people have different levels of experience and comfort with self-directed learning or charting their own course, not intended. Um, personally, I have bad, members, bad memories of being made to slowly click through following the, follow the bouncing ball style of computer classes as a kid. I don't know whether anyone else had this. So it's deeply important to me to not bore people, and it's also important to me that people not feel lost. So the same way that like, uh, in my meeting organizing life, I might send an agenda around before a meeting and invite people to propose changes. I try to make space to ascertain consent in the process. Um, today I'm thinking we'll go through lesson X on the screen in the other room for about 45 minutes and then put it into the practice for the next hour, then have a quick go around at the end. How does that sound to everyone? Is there anything else someone wants to do? If you get bored, please feel empowered to dive right in or go do something else. Um, encouraging people to follow their interests. Uh, the reason I mention it as a challenge is that I, it's, a, it's a matter of personal style to some degree, of course, but um, to me, uh, it was important to feel like people were you know, able to, like, if they were not interested in doing something, express that they were interested in doing something else, or just go do this something else, and not feel like they had to deferentially like, sit there um, because I decided they were doing something. Imposter syndrome, you heard some about this at the keynote if you were there, and <laughs> many people have that too. And baggage around non-code contributions. Um, but in the words of the youth feminism like you get imposter syndrome is a situation where someone feels like an imposter or a fraud because they think their accomplishments are nowhere near as good as those of the people around them. And usually their accomplishments are just as good, and the person's applying on fairly high standards for self and not to others. Especially common fields where people's work is constantly under review by talented peers. So while I am, I am proposing here that um, this kind of approach can be useful for combating imposter syndrome, uh, by definition, that means that people might be grappling with some of that in the room, even as, even as you're all interacting, right? Um, Self included. So it's not, um, it's not a bad thing to pull it. Um, it's useful, I think, to, to recognize. And some things that you can do to try to help around that um, and specifically address in recruiting participants and continuing to reinforce this throughout are explicit invitations. Uh, here's an example I like from my friend and current teammate, the Code for America Volume Cloud. It's for a Civic Hat Fund, but workable for other things. Um, and the, um, the idea here, as you can see, is rather than saying, we're having a hackathon, come to a hackathon if you know what that is, and if you feel like a person who's qualified to do a hackathon, and if you code, um, it instead um, sort of focuses on the goals and the kinds of people who might be able to help with it. So, um, in, in the example of Drupal community, um, this was put to good effect, uh, not this specific code chart, but um, a, a different example for DrupalCon Portland, for instance, um, and subsequent subsequent DrupalCons have had a code sprint called the Get Involved with Core Sprint. Um, and all of the messaging around that reiterates, if you have Drupal site building experience on a laptop, please come. If you have site building experience on a laptop, you're, you're fully welcome. Friendly people will be on hand to help you. So, Explicit invitations. Um, another challenge that came up <laughs> was um, uh, what, what we might call all learning, no tangible contribution. Um, Drupal Ladder suggests having learn sprints and issue sprints. Uh, learn sprints being, we're going to set this time aside to work through some of this like 
curriculum here, a, a ladder lesson, and issue sprints being we're going to identify some issues in the issue queue, which is how Drupal manages its work, um, and work through them. We did half and half, and frankly, that was partly because I was concerned that people might show up only for the learn sprints and less often for the issue sprints. Um, not necessarily intentionally, but partly just being <coughs> busy and partly if you're a little more intimidated, um, it might be tempting to just want to keep like uh, reading or practicing more and not sort of getting in the water. Um, so even so, the, the checkouts would sometimes reveal, and by checkouts, I mean um, we usually did go around uh, at the end of like, again, your name, pronoun, where you're from, people in New York want to say where they're from, but also it's helpful for like knowing who was able to make it and what places they had to travel from, uh, which can inform where you might go in the future. Um, but also something that you did today that you liked and something that you would change. Something, something you learned today, something you would change. Um, and sometimes the checkouts would reveal that people were learning a lot, which was great, uh, but not immediately putting it into practice, which um, in a broad sense is probably still a great thing, but um, ostensibly part of the goal is to increase contributions like that day to Drupal report. So some of this is about making sure that people have clear tasks that they feel are well matched to them. Some of it is about smiling and encouraging someone to try it right now, yes, right now. Um, and some is about event structure. Um, so having a stand-up style, like what are you going to work on for the next hour, um, is something that could have been helpful. Um, mostly it seemed to be about helping people stay focused on actually trying a thing, but um, yeah, lots of questions of sort of like feeling about the thing and what, what would help you to, to get started trying it. Uh, institutional memory um, has been another, another challenge. Um, community organizers talk about, and others I'm sure talk about, a ladder of engagement. I'm not intended again here, but you want to start moving people up right away so that when your life takes other turns, if you're, if you're starting something like this, when your life takes other turns or you get a cold or whatever, that doesn't mean that a dozen, two dozen, however many people you have don't get to learn that day because you can't make it, right? Um, so it's mostly about individual volunteers, but also including backup venues, sponsors, other forms of capacity. Just the sooner you can get started with that, the better. Um, at our very first, um, at our very first meetup, um, when during that like go around at the end, people said a few people said this was great, but I'd really like to do it every two weeks instead of once a month. And I was like, whoa, that's <laughs> that's great, but I can't do it twice a month because I have other commitments. Um, and um, and bridging the bridging the gap between um, like there's clearly a need for more leaders um, to uh, people to, to facilitate um, and people doing that um, is another is another like area of oh, class right now um, so, uh, another important area um, institutional memory similarly uh, creating documentation around the, the community elements of that like here is how we run an event at the Drupal meetups in the Drupal ladder meetups in New York. Feel free to change this, but here are you know some scaffolding to get you started. Um, is a thing that I like the wanting to do, and that I think would help with the capacity building. Um, I'm very interested in hearing during the Q and A what um, everyone in the room has to say about projects and how they've done this. So another um, sort of lesson learned: uh, document and communicate. So. Um, Having a sign-in sheet is good so that you can know who's coming regularly, um, how attendance numbers are doing, what seems to affect attendance. For instance, people, as I mentioned, have been saying they wanted to meet every two weeks, but at one point, um, this is a quality problem to have, but there was such a wealth of activities in the New York Drupal community that the latter was at the tail end of three weekends of events and some during the week of events, and attendance was down to, I think, two or three people. It was also the week of Passover, and a lot of people had house cleaning. So, Keeping some sense of the numbers meant that I could say, like, hey everyone, it's great that everyone's so excited. We had this many people before, and last week only three showed up. Um, check in, you know, non-shamingly about like what is going, what is going on for people, and what their level of interest and, and uh, commitment is, is a loaded word to use. But like, just sort of, you know, are, are you still interested? Um, what makes it hard to get to these? What would work better? Um, so in that case, you know, we changed our frequency for a bit and saw that when we scaled back down to a month. Um, taking pictures, uh, again, that is important, um, but post write-ups of, of what you did, what people learned. Post them so that people who can't make it for whatever reason can see how much fun you're having. Um, not just for fear of missing out or something, but um, partly because it's good to like, be exist in a broader community of people, right? And it's nice to be able to learn 
from other places and what they're doing well, um, and that can happen, you know, without you ever meeting someone. We all know about the power of the internet, but um, it's probably preaching the choir, but I just appreciate it. Um, so some outcomes for participants. Everyone made their first contributions to Dribble itself. Um, by, I'm going to say by the end of the year, but really, like, by the end of the first session or two. Um, the things things that came up by the end by the end of the year um, were that everyone had made their first contributions. Um, people had increased their skill sets. Um, that could include things that are not Drupal specific, like getting comfortable with Git, which is a popular version control system, uh, as well as learning to use the Drupal community's tools, like the issue queue patches and so on. Some people landed their first professional um, Drupal jobs. Um, people made Drupal friends. They they built community and a network. Confidence. This might sound patronizing, and I really don't mean it that way. But just like genuinely, the more you do a thing and feel good about what you've done, um, a lot of people said the step-by-step -step approach of the in-person meetings both helped them to feel more confident that they had something to contribute. Um, some people came in as like, "I'm just a designer. I don't know what I can do here," or um, or saying like, I, "I don't, I don't have any skills I can use." I'm like, "Well, I hear you talking to me in English, and much of the current documentation is in English." So, for instance. Set about you know, improving the, the issue descriptions, and that would be a valuable thing. For instance, because a lot, a lot of the issue queue stuff. I mean, it sounds like I'm kidding, but also for real, like the issue queues, for better or for worse, are largely written in English. People do translate some elements, but um, it's not the case that everyone working on the Drupal project is able to take um, something that's written not very clearly in English and rewrite it more clearly in English. So again, like there are lots of different ways for people to plug in. Um, and also, let's be real, uh, people gain the status that comes with contributing, which relates to some participants got their first professional Drupal jobs, right? And also relates to network of Drupal events. Um, outcomes for the local community. The, the Drupal community included increased capacity um, and expanded ecosystems so that people would show up and say, hey, I'm interested in learning about Drupal, and I've heard this is the place that beginners come. And you're like, that's really great. Thank you so much for coming. This is a good place for people who have done some site building and have a laptop. But if you want to learn about Drupal, period, go to the meetup, the regular meetup that's happening next Wednesday, and I'll be there, and I'll be a friendly face, so you can say hi. You know. Um, so people, it did uh, bring more people in, in, in that kind of a level as well, um, and as well as benefiting from the existing uh, main meetup. Um, participants have since stepped up into organizing local camps um, and to mentoring other contributors at DrupalCon, um, and uh, another piece of public culture of learning, building, and contributing is a, is a good thing, I would say. So um, it helps to helps to continue to establish like we are a community where people help each other and it's good to like come in and level up your skills and it's totally fine to do another thing. Also like the tribe, everyone likes that. Um, some outcomes for the Drupal project, um, both contributions obviously as well as like, the other all the other kinds of things, patches that had been rolled uh, months years before that needed to be updated. You know, in general just the the, the on core work that needed to be happening happen, was happening. Um, capacity building, as mentioned, some of the contributors have since mentored at Sprints at DrupalCon, uh, which means that at DrupalCon there are more mentors. <laughs> this is a good thing for the project. Um, and also increased diversity of group making and getting credit for contributions. Some benefits of a step-by-step -step process, I would say. There is a clear path to success for participants. Once you've done these steps, You've used the skill. You just you just used Git. You tried the thing. Now you can do it. Um, it's easy for someone to pick up the curriculum and whoops, um, and and run an event. So it's, it's also there's a clear path to success for event organizers. Um, reusable components. Uh, since it's an open source project, and by it I mean Drupal Ladder, like the contents of DrupalLadder.org. Um, anytime someone ran into issues, they're like, oh, this isn't working on my system. Oh, this isn't for so the like, operating system they're using. Um, it was a good example of how you can scratch your, I mean, ideally, it's nice to like, have everything be working, and if it's not, which does happen in life sometimes, <laughs> is a good example of how, like, okay, well, if you're looking for something to work on today, maybe you want to update the instructions in the Drupal ladder, and then everyone else who is working on this in the future um, will benefit from the value you've contributed by fixing that thing that was missing, or confusing, or outdated, or just wrong. Um, shared language and shared experience can help build community. Um, that's a nice thing. 
And people can work on this on their own time. So some people actually um, would like to sort of rehearse by themselves before coming to the ladder. Um, so people would do the whole learn sprint part at home and then show up and help other people immediately or want to go over it another time by themselves. Um, so having that step-by-step -step process that's available to anyone on their own time can really be useful in more ways than you might anticipate in setting it up originally. So benefits of the community piece. Um, you don't have to reinvent the outreach wheel. If you have any tech, any communities that you can tap into, and you know, I'm talking about tech communities, but presumably you can think of others, um, you can you can capitalize on what's there already. Um, accountability and motivation to keep going. This is honestly part of why I started a meetup. Is I thought, all right, I want to do this, and I know that I'm more likely to actually do it if there are other people doing it too. I will probably have more fun, and I will show up on Saturday or Sunday or whatever it was regularly. Um, if there are other people who I know are going to be doing that as well. Um, more experienced people can help newer people, which then means people are learning more. Um, and also, I put this up there, but um, there was lots of, you learn more in person than you might initially have set out to, to learn. There's more from the, that is covered in the curriculum. So lots of like, I, I imagine many people have had this experience like, hey, nice command line trick, or like, what text are you using? Or like, oh, I've never seen that dev environment before, or I had that problem too. Um, so these serendipitous things can come up too, or together. And also, um, in, a, in a different serendipitous direction, community members got a chance to experience what it was like to work with each other, which um, in New York anyway, there are a lot of people jobs floating around at the moment, and uh, a lot of uh, available work, so it's nice to um, not only people who are not as tapped into that being able to get referrals, but also to get a sense of what someone was like um, when deciding whether you might want to want to uh, work. Also, um, it's an informal networking event, so job opportunities do come up. People find people to work for and with them. And uh, last but not least, some people think this is fun. Oh, there we go. Apologies. Again, networking. Um, some benefits to the project itself. Um, the work itself, obviously, is a benefit. More contributors with more skills. More people interested in and getting a chance to mentor and teach each other. And increased capacity in general, which means decreased risk of burnout overall, um, which is one of the initial issues that we sought to address. So, in sum, um, I think you can increase your contributor pool. Um, using a structured approach for step-by-step -step skill building, which can be a secret weapon for getting more people involved, um, and also increasing the diversity of the group of people who are doing and getting credit for higher status tasks, which is also good for your community overall, I would say. And a community element can be helpful for continued motivation, encouragement, learning, and networking. Um, oops. And I would love to have a Q&A, but I also really want to learn from everyone who's in here and interested in this, so I will I will just throw out there that you, you know, I want to hear your questions. And I also want to hear what you think, um, what some other structured approaches that you've worked with are. Um, just letters should be the expertise of people who know what you can hear. Thank you. Questions? So I'm just like, what are some of the first steps? Like, of the triple average? Yeah. What are the steps you guys Sure. Um, and to be clear, um, sorry, I tried to do this weird thing, but I hope that this is further on to this presentation. I did not create a triple average. Yeah. Um, some, some wonderful people in Boston um, whose names I cut out of my presentation when I was running over time practicing did. But, um, <laughs> um, but um, I will send that out. Um, some of the first steps are download Drupal um, from Drupal.org. Um, then there is a, let's see whether I can actually zoom out here. Yeah, get, um, um, but yes, uh, installing Drupal, working with Git, rewriting an issue summary, um, creating an account in the, well, each of these includes sort of like, oh, make an account and post a test comment. Um, at one point, there was a, uh, we had a snag because there had been some spam issue on 
uh, in the issue queue, and so people had to get a special role, um, and a lot of folks kind of like freaked out at that moment. Um, but because we were in the room together, it could be like, no, no, it's okay, it's gonna happen. Here, I'm gonna hop on IRC where the people live, and you know, demonstrate like what we do when we get stuck in these things, you know. Um, and, uh, and so people made it through that moment that they might not have otherwise. But, um, but yeah, mostly you kind of have to work with the, with the tools. So would you classify the collaborator as a tutorial, or is it something different than a tutorial in some like meaningful way? Um, I am not a professional educator, so I may be missing nuances of the implications I, of that, no but idea. I would say, yeah, I would say it's a series of tutorials. It's a step-by-step -step, um, develop, develop and practice these skills, essentially. Um, piece. Uh, does the Lighter change based on where the release cycle you are, because like what the project needs is different, you know, as the release cycle starts, which is what it needs, you know, to get closer to release it. Great question. Um, I think that one area where the, um, so I should say there, there have been other efforts to also address the how do we get more contributors um, and, and support, better support our contributors, like questions in Drupal. Um, and one of those has been mentoring, um, so both through IRC and in person. Um, I think that that connection has been more clearly drawn in like the code sprints at DrupalCon or, or bigger things like that. Usually people, people organizing them are encouraged to reach out um, and check in about what's going to be most suitable. Um, in Brian Hirsch's initial post to the, the Boston Drupal group, um, he was clear about like we should talk with um, core contributors and maintainers who are working on like significant initiatives to make sure that we're helping with what's in line. Um, but most of the most of the steps are pretty skill based, and they might have an example of like what to go do. Usually, that's on the scale of a corral. It's like go over here to this sample section of the issue queue, so that there aren't any sort of like fake posts confusing people. Um, but I think this would be a good room for for further bridging. Um, to there's work being done right now to try to solve the I want to help, but I don't know what to do. Like I have these skills, but I don't know which issue to work on element. And some of that is in there through like your time. You find novice tag issues in Drupal Q, um, but um, the the priority level is is a is an, is an art. So there are nods to that. I would say in some of the lessons, um, yeah, probably for for further. <coughs> And it's tricky too when it's sometimes it's like, well, there are 15 blockers of Drupal beta, but not all of them have a novice appropriate task. Um, and novice here doesn't mean like new to anything, but just new to contributing in this specific kind of way, right? So you want to make sure someone has a has a quick win and the experience of success before they even if they're like, no, I'm ready to tackle it. That's cool. Let me just give you, let's just find something that you can make progress on really quickly and then you know. I had uh, one suggestion and one question. I'm only more or less for now. Uh, the first question is, did it work? Did you actually start contributing to core personally? Haha, ha. yes. Um, I, at DrupalCon Portland, got pulled up on stage to uh, hit enter on, on the big commit uh, next to Dries, the creator of the Drupal project, for my first patch to core. It happened. Um, so that was a real cute thing. <laughs> Come back to the Drupal ladder meetup and be like, hey everyone, um, thanks for your patience around DrupalCon, and guess what? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I would say that I have made fewer code contributions um, because I've been, like, in the, in the times when I've been focusing on running an event, you know, um, and checking on how people are doing it. And again, you know, people make their own choices about these things, presumably one can run an event and be like, well, I'm going to be head down, and I do think it's important to, um, and the, the latter encourages in the online materials, like, make it clear that everyone is working on the things, and there's no one who's, like, above or outside of working on the things. Um, but the fact remains that I, I didn't do as much coding as I would have if I was not going around, like, checking on what people were doing. Um, but yes. <laughs> and then my suggestion is, uh, one thing that I found really helpful, which I picked up from Software Carpentry, is that when you have a bunch of people in the room who are working on some task, some of them are going to be stuck, some of them are going to be doing great. You can rely on them to raise their hands, they will raise their hands and then put them down, and mm -hmm. so hands will gravitate, and you can lose them forever. So instead, uh, if you give people a red sticky note to put on the back of the laptops, that signifies to whoever's walking around and this person needs help. The sticky note will stay there. Yeah. Yeah.
And then uh, if they've done a task, like in your case, there's a learn phase and a do phase. If they haven't finished the thing, they put a green sticky on. And then you can go say, oh, what can we do next? Yes. You can also turn that into an impromptu like the survey, or you have your own methods, mm -hmm. that would be great. Because you can get people to write their questions or obstacles or event complaints on their red sticky, then leave them anonymously as part of the exit. Cool. That sounds like it would work especially well for, for bigger events where like, we, like, we have more than 140 people at the, at the nice camp, which we spent this last time. Um, and something like that would be helpful. Is it if there were a dozen people in the room at one of these, then I was usually just sort of, you know, like, survey the room and see how people seem to be doing and ask how they seem to be doing. But that's really great. Do you use it for other areas of contribution, like support or communication? Good question. Um, there is, uh, I would say that this is pretty focused on. Um, contributing to core meaning like doing something that will affect the code that gets downloaded from Drupal.org um, as just Drupal. Um, but there are other like handbooks on Drupal.org about things like um, contributing to documentation and there's been a there's been a big ramp up in that area because as you can I'm sure imagine that it's another area where they can need. I mean any area of contribution is like an opportunity for people to uh, feel great about it and or eventually feel kind of burned out about it. So um, so that kind of stuff can be different areas is super great. Do you see like a, a marked increase in the number of contributors since bringing the Drupal ladder in? Yeah, um, Drupal 7 had 900 and I want to say 78, but somewhere between 900 and 1,000 um, people mentioned in the commit messages. So again, this is the like, whose names made it into code. And Drupal 8 is not out yet, but the, so far there have been more than 2,000 names mentioned. Um, I will note as a like person with a statistics background doing my due diligence that part of that could also be attributed to like people being more intentional about crediting everyone who is involved, like including patch reviewers and people who didn't necessarily. But um, but the yeah there's a there's a there's a graph available which I did not include of um, of contributions to Drupal. Um, in different versions, and they were going down to Drupal 7, and now it is back up. So. Contributions there being number of speakers. Any more questions? Let's thank the speaker again.